Welcome to this, our online gathering in the presence of God. The service we'll be using is from the Iona community and the words in yellow are words I invite you to say together. Thank you for taking this time and taking up God's invitation to be here. He wishes to connect with you and will speak to you during a word, during a song, during a time of silence or during a time of prayer. So welcome. It's wonderful to be able to spend this time together in God's presence. Let us begin. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, God was. Here and now, among us, beside us, enlisting the people of earth for the purposes of heaven, God is. And in the future, when we have turned to dust and all we know has found its fulfillment, God will be. And so not denying the world, but delighting in it, and not condemning the world, but redeeming it through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. God was, God is, God will be. And so let's say this prayer together. Throughout this day, enliven our minds, inspire our conversation, inform our decisions and protect those we love. And should this day bring what we neither anticipate nor desire, increase our faith and decrease our pride until we know that when we face the unexpected we do not stand alone we ask this through our savior jesus christ amen so let's now bring before the lord those times when we have let him down those times when we've let others down 
and those times when we've let ourselves down. God's word says that he will take those sins as we deliver them and place them at the foot of his cross and he will throw them as far as the east is from the west into the sea of forgetfulness to remember them no more. So let's sing together, Search Me, O God. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. Let us pray together in the community of Christ's church and in the presence of all God's people. We confess to God that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved God, cared for God's world, or respected God's people as we should. We own our responsibility and pray for God's pardon. So may God forgive us, Christ befriend us, and the Spirit renew and change our lives. Amen. So let's now continue to worship God in a song of praise. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden. Hey! 
And so now let's continue to worship God as we delve into his word. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise, and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priest? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him, but his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples. And they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Father, we thank you that you have spoken to us. Speak to us again as we hear your word unpacked and brought to us, open the ears of our hearts to hear from you this day. Well, welcome to this, our sixth week of looking through the book of Acts. We're up to chapter 9. And let's bring some context into what's been happening thus far. Jesus asked the disciples to wait in Jerusalem. 
they were obedient and they waited for seven days and then the holy spirit came upon them as was prophesied in the book of joel three thousand came to faith that day and here were the high priests i'm sure and the romans would have been concerned that this jesus they had hoped to get rid of has now risen appeared to over 500 people has poured in his holy spirit onto now over 3,000 people and we've then heard of peter who uh, used the gifts of the spirit to uh, have a lame man walk at the temple 5,000 came to faith soon after that the high priest must now be wondering what's going on gamaliel stood before them remember in the sanhedrin when they were trying to tell peter to stop spreading the good news and peter of course wouldn't and aren't we thankful for that and gamaliel who of course was one of the sanhedrin said to them we need to be careful of these men because if this is of human origin this will simply die out but if this is of god not only will we not be able to stop it but we will find ourselves fighting against god himself and the scripture says and they listen to what he said come forward to what we spoke about last week with uh, stephen and stephen being uh, martyred saul was standing there approving of what was going on it seems to me that maybe the sanhedrin weren't listening to what gamaliel had said and so here's saul as we read at the beginning of chapter 9 crying out murderous threats going out with a letter from the high priest to round up all of those who were followers of the way and we hear that as he travels toward damascus that god literally knocks him off his high horse and jesus says this saul saul why are you persecuting me and here we have this strange conversation but saul says this he says who are you lord and the word lord used there is the word kurios in the original greek it's used over 200 times in the new testament to speak of the lordship of christ but jesus decides that actually he doesn't want to know why he's being persecuted and effectively he says this i am jesus he answers saul's question that is whom you were persecuting and then he says in a paraphrase i'm the one that you seem to hate but i'm going to show you saul how my love for you will outweigh your hate for me and then gives him instructions on what to do next ananias who was not connected with the story really in any way up until now is sitting at home and having a vision that there is a man named saul who is sitting and god has been talking to him about ananias but ananias says this saul is this threat to all the wonderful things that are happening in jesus name why would i go and see him and jesus says but i'm already softening his heart towards me and ananias of course gets up goes and sees him prays for him something like scales fall from his eyes saul has been sitting there for three days contemplating the things that have been happening around him and i am sure within that time has discovered the errancy of his way ananias comes and sees him he is baptized into the faith and as they say as we discover through the rest of the book of acts the rest is history paul writes over half of the new testament uh, scriptures that we have uh, what a powerful change of heart change of attitude from this uh, tyrant named saul uh, which makes me think of the situation we find ourselves in today we have this COVID 19 going and there seems to be those in this camp and there seems to be those in that camp have we ever considered as christians that we are called to pray for our leaders to pray for our prime minister to pray for our politicians maybe somebody was praying 
for Saul as he started persecuting the church. Have we ever considered that? That somebody was praying for Saul and Saul came to faith, changed his ways and brought hundreds of thousands and throughout time millions of people to faith through his obedience to the call. What if we were to do that? What if within this COVID environment, we were to pray for those who appear to be not working within the will of God? Maybe, just maybe, God may meet them in the same way that he met Saul. And what a difference that would make. I certainly know from my own witness that back in the day when I came to the Lord so many years ago now, I'd been at church for six months or so, met up with a lady named Mary, and Mary said, it is so good to see you here, Russell. And I went, well, thank you. I'm just loving this walk with the Lord. And she said, oh, no. She said, it's because for 18 months, I was praying for you by name every single day until you came to faith, and now here you are. What if we were to do the same thing? What if we were to bring people to faith that way what a change that could make and then we hear of Saul leaving the relative comfort of Damascus where he was starting to become quite a big fish in a little pond we find that uh, some of the followers there were getting a little bit upset on how Paul was influencing uh, the people of Damascus and they wanted to kill him and what happened was that uh, some of his Paul's uh, supporters helped him escape and he went to Jerusalem. Many times, as we will hear as time goes on uh, throughout our study of the book of Acts, where God has taken situations where he has shaken up the foundations, where he has shaken up the people, where he has even brought sometimes calamity and dispersion and all sorts of uh, situations within the church that have dispersed it uh, all over the place and then we find that that's how he gets his gospel spread I wonder whether today with this discomfort that we're feeling that this is his nudging of us to stand up for what is right stand up for the name of Jesus and speak the gospel into uh, the world today Paul didn't go around trying to get rid of of the Romans or trying to get rid of um, the uh, high priests uh, and uh, what was happening in Jerusalem. He simply went round and preached the good news of Jesus Christ. And that is our challenge today, to preach the good news of Jesus wherever God puts us. And I am sure that that will change things uh, to the glory of his name and for the coming of his kingdom. And so next week, we will discover that God has major plans to grow the church, and yet he needs to rattle a cage or two to ensure that that comes to pass. So Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to share your good news on this platform. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, that your word says you are with us always, that you will never leave us or forsake us. As you said to Moses, uh, that when the time is right, I will give you the words that you need. So Lord, help us to become an obedient church. Help us to become obedient followers of the way and to share your good news with those who desperately need to hear it in this time and this age. For the glory of your name, I pray. Amen. Father God, as we come before you, we thank you that you are a God who listens, a God who hears our prayers. So in these next moments of silence, we bring before the Lord those people, those times, those circumstances before a God of compassion. We acknowledge he is a God who heals. We is a God who binds up the brokenhearted. We acknowledge that he is a God who releases prisoners from the cells of their addictions. He is a God who loves and has compassion for his people.
We thank you, Father, for having an ear towards your children. We ask, Lord, that according to your will and your purpose, so our prayers will be answered. And as Christ teaches us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now as we come together for the high point of this gathering, let us remember that this is a commandment of our Lord. He said to his followers on that last night as they gathered together around a table, as we are at this point in time gathering in our homes, he too gathered his friends together. And he said to them, as he took the most basic element on the table, a simple loaf of bread, and he gave it eternal significance when he said, this is my body, it is given for you. He said, eat this, all of you, and when you do, do this to remember me. And then, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given you thanks, he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, the new promise, the doors of the very throne room of God thrown wide open for his kids to come in. The blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said to them, drink this, all of you. And when you do, do so to remember me. And so therefore, merciful God, we thank you that you send in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and this wine and you fill them with the fullness of Jesus. Father God, let that same Spirit rest on each of us. Come, Holy Spirit, and convert us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. For he whom the universe could not contain now meets us in this bread. And he who redeems us calls each of us by name, now meets us in this cup. So friends, take your bread and your wine, for in them God comes to us so that we may come to God. And so we break the bread in remembrance that Christ gave of himself for each of us. And we drink of the cup in remembrance that Christ spilled his blood for you and for me. Amen. And so we now say together the prayer for after communion. In deep gratitude for this moment, this meal and for these gathered friends we give ourselves to you take us out to live as changed people because we have shared living bread and cannot remain the same ask much of us expect much from us enable much by us encourage many through us so Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. So let us now celebrate as we sing our final song together.
And so as we leave here this day, from where we are to where you need us, Jesus, now lead on. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lead on. To refashion the fabric of the community you have placed us in until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on because good things have been prepared for those who love God, Jesus, now lead on. Send us now to love and serve you, Lord. Send us out in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. And so as we leave here today, may the Holy Spirit indwell you and fill you and strengthen you and encourage you. And may God bless you and his favour rest on you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.